In the late 1950s and 1960s, the aviation industry was on a mission to create a technological marvel that would revolutionize air travel forever. The supersonic transport, or SST, aircraft was the object of their obsession, promising to deliver unprecedented speed for international travel. Among the major players in this game was the Lockheed Corporation, determined to answer the U.S. government's call for a supersonic transport aircraft. But Lockheed had a bold and unexpected approach to the challenge. Instead of a small, sleek design, they went in a different direction, creating a massive aircraft that would dwarf anything seen before or since. The CL-1201 was a behemoth with a wingspan of 1,120 feet, more than twice the size of any existing aircraft, even today. The sheer power required to lift such a mammoth plane off the ground took a staggering 182 separate vertical lift engines. Today, the CL-1201 remains the largest aircraft ever designed. Even more impressive than its size, the technological prowess and advancements that this project was supposed to achieve feel like science fiction. Nuclear power for dozens of engines, aircraft carrying other aircraft, mid-air docking, and more. Fact and Fiction For centuries, ships had been the preferred method of deployment overseas until the 1960s, when the introduction of jets brought about a bigger and faster form of travel. One great example was the Boeing 747. However, the Lockheed Corporation was keen on making aviation history as well. During the late 1950s and 1960s, Lockheed was one of the leading companies in aircraft design and development, and the CL-1201 was their response to the U.S. government's request for an SST aircraft. Stemming from the earlier L-2000 SST concept, the CL-1201 is the largest aircraft ever designed, even to this day. Notably, it was much larger than the fictional USS Enterprise in the 1960s Star Trek series, making it an engineering marvel. The CL-1201 would have been powered by four General Electric GE-4 J5P turbojet engines with a total thrust of over 100,000 pounds, enabling it to reach speeds of up to Mach 3.2, more than three times the speed of sound. With a wingspan of 1,120 feet, more than twice the size of any aircraft today, the CL-1201 was designed to have VTOL capabilities, similar to the British Harrier jump jet. Just to get it off the ground, the aircraft was powered by 182 separate vertical lift engines, more than enough to make aviation history. Iterations Lockheed had envisioned three variants of the CL-1201 aircraft, taking inspiration from the 747. The first version, named the Attack Aircraft Carrier, was designed to carry a total of 24 aircraft, supposedly F-4 Phantoms, with 11 fighter bombers under each wing and two more in the fuselage hangars. The CL-1201 would have been able to carry a load of at least 5,440 tons and could fly for at least 41 days continuously. It had six decks reserved for sleeping quarters, a mess hall, and recreational space for the crew of 475, and provisions for 325 more during a combat mission. This version of the aircraft was designed to act as a command center and would have led any invasion or military power projection, with its bombers clearing the way for a ground-based assault. It could also carry up to 10 long-range nuclear-tipped missiles. The second variant was more practical. As a logistic support aircraft, it could only carry 200 to 400 soldiers and 1,150 tons of cargo assigned to ferry troops and equipment. One plan had the CL-1201 deploying troops via a fleet of five 707 medium intra-theater transport planes that would physically dock with the aircraft while in flight. Soldiers and equipment would be transferred between the two aircraft via a special airlock in the nose of the 707. Lockheed had initially designed three variants of the aircraft, but only two were officially studied. Rumors circulated about the existence of a third variant, but all evidence of it seems to have been erased from the official record. Yet, as outlandish as the first two variants were, it is up to the imagination to conjure up what exactly the third variant could have done. The Source of Power Obviously, the gigantic CL-1201 would require an immense amount of power to operate. 
and in the middle of the 1960s, there was only one possible solution to cope with the design's demands, nuclear power. The aircraft's engines would receive power from the heat generated by a nuclear reactor, which would superheat the air passing through the jets to create thrust. This nuclear power plant would allow the plane to stay airborne for several weeks without refueling. On the other hand, conventional fuel would only be burned at low altitudes. The CL-1201 was designed to use a reactor that could produce 1.83 gigawatts of power, enabling it to fly for up to 48 days at Mach 0.8 at over 16,000 feet. During battles, the aircraft carrier would circle the battlefield at 30,000 feet from 600 miles away. Admittedly, however, even getting these planes off the ground was no easy feat. The runway required a bare minimum width of 650 feet, and the takeoff roll would have been impossibly long. Lockheed attempted to address this issue by using 54 turbojet engines from the 747 to provide 82,000 pounds of thrust. Once the aircraft reached an altitude of 16,000 feet, four massive turbojet engines near the tail would take over. These engines were so large that each had the same diameter as a Boeing 747. But on top of the engineering challenges posed by these massive aircraft, they also presented significant vulnerabilities. Paying the bills. Due to their enormous dimensions, the carriers were susceptible to missile attacks. Lockheed's proposed solution was a laser cannon defense system. However, even with today's technology, such a system would be challenging to develop and implement. Despite the mesmerizing design, many people considered the CL-1201 doomed from the beginning. It is evident that this project was a technological pipe dream, especially back in its era. And still, for many aviation enthusiasts and experts alike, it is all the sadder that such a magnificent aircraft never got off the ground. The project faced insurmountable hurdles that ultimately condemned it to remain on the drawing board forever. The first and most notable issue was money, a problem that proved too high to overcome. The costs of researching, designing, and testing the CL-1201 were astronomical, even by aerospace standards. The project was too expensive to justify, and the bill for its development was beyond what the United States was willing to pay. But even if it had been funded, there were other concerns that 1960s scientists and engineers could have never addressed. Castles in the Sky Simply put, the plane was way ahead of its time. But perhaps among all the logical reasons not to create the stunning CL-1201, the most heart-wrenching issue was the inherent danger of nuclear aircraft. The idea of nuclear-powered aircraft flying around was a terrifying thought at the time, and convincing people that it was a good idea was a monumental task. The public was having a hard enough time accepting nuclear power plants, let alone nuclear aircraft. Despite these insurmountable challenges, the CL-1201 was an impressive feat, even if it was only a dream. It's unfortunate the CL-1201 never had a chance to fly. But maybe someday, with more advanced technology and a renewed spirit, we will see a similar aircraft take to the skies. Welcome to Dark Tech. We hope you've enjoyed our fascinating military content. Our Dark Documentaries channels are a treasure trove of gripping stories from recent history waiting for you. Don't miss out on the chance to discover more mind-blowing content. Hit that like button and make sure you subscribe to our channel to be the first to know about our upcoming releases. Thank you for watching.